It's Saturday, November 26, 2022. And it's uh, just after seven o'clock in the blessed morning. The sun is a long ways from coming up yet. We're uh, just loading up to go to a market today, Christmas market. We, uh, we don't really do very many markets anymore, but uh, you know, this is a Christmas market. It's put on by a friend of ours. It's in our, our local town. I call it town. It's actually city, <laughs> the city of Selkirk. Uh, so just getting some last minute things in the, in the truck. It's some honey and we got our chairs and a table in there. Uh, just the essentials and off we go. So hopefully sales are swift. Um, I've stopped stressing about uh, the amount of sales at, at markets. It's just a fun way to meet people and a fun day. I know it's a bit more stressful on my wife and I feel bad about that, <clears throat> but she's a trooper for coming along anyway. I don't know if the camera is gonna pick this up, but you can see this is, uh, this is full on Southeast where the sun is gonna come up over there time of year it's crazy it twilight is very long um, the camera I think makes it look brighter out here than it really is anyway that's uh, that's what's going on today and uh, got the little truck loaded and off we go and hopefully we have some some fun hopefully you sell all the honey too but you know gonna have some fun and get some exposure get people get the honey in their hands and in their mouths and get them uh, get them hooked on manitoba's most delicious honey have a great day it's sunday november 27th 2022 and i'm just working at unloading the truck here because yesterday saturday we attended a christmas market uh in town in selkirk and uh, it went well we sold quite a bit of product but more more than that you know we had fun it's nice to be out amongst people for, you know, one of the first times in a few years. And nice to connect with some of our regular customers and it's nice to meet some new customers. So uh, I'm trying not to really get involved in too much today. It's a Sunday. We worked all day yesterday. So this is a, a day for me to kind of recover and recoup. And then Monday I can get back at it. That's all that's going on. And uh, I will leave it at that. So I wish you a very great weekend. Happy Sunday. Get some rest. Hit it again tomorrow. And have a great day and have fun. It's Monday, November 28th, 2022. I've just been working in the wood shop today. Trying to clear things out again. Get things organized. And I've got a few builds in mind. To uh, hopefully make things a little more efficient in here. I'm always hurting for uh, storage for tools and supplies. And uh, that is what today's project is kind of about. So I had a shelving unit up here and it was, it was open to uh, this side. Okay, and it was closed on, on the side toward the doors. It was about 34 inches wide and uh, 18 inches deep. It was a good shelving unit, I used it well. However, I realized it was, it was very difficult to use because I invariably pile crap in the middle of the garage here right in front of the shelf. So, you know, that ended up not working so well. So what I decided to do was to turn it around and make the shelves uh, accessible from the side, this side and that side. So it's going to be bigger. It'll be actually about twice as big because it'll be 30, uh, I think it's 34 inches deep and it'll end up being about 36 inches wide or so. Um, and along the way, I decided to take on a project that I was wanting to do for quite some time. And that is to mount my retractable holds reel here on the wall pointing outside. And uh, I'll go outside and show you that. So I, I'd like to fashion a grommet here to protect the siding, but if I can pull it, then it, it now retracts into the wall. So now I can easily, or more easily, um, air up tires in, in the driveway here uh, without having to open the door, maybe open the door in the winter. Uh, 
I'll probably still have the air chuck in the building, so I'll have to go inside anyway. And I might have problem with uh, condensation icing up in the winter uh, on the air hose because there's a lot of moisture involved when you compress air. Uh, you can see it's not very late, but sun's down now. <laughs> uh, such is the case out here. And so that's it. That's what's going on today. So I've just got the air hose mounted and I'm just tightening the bolts on the wall. Then I'll start reassembling the shelf. Uh, I'll need to cut a little more plywood for shelving and um, some more planks for uh, supports, etc. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Have fun. It's Tuesday, November 29th, 2022. I'm just working on my new shelving unit here for a few minutes before I need to take off to Winnipeg again. And it's snowing a little bit, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I just wanted to show you kind of how I'm structuring this. Uh, it's, you know, it's one way to do things. It's, it's a bit... It's a bit of an overbuilt system, but it's not going to fall down and it's going to be well structured. I get worried about some, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos on how people, oh, well, I'm going to build a shelving unit. And I don't believe that uh, a, a lot of times they're not structured very well. And, you know, safety is important. You sometimes put a lot of weight on these things and, you know, casual bystander might not realize that things are a little bit dangerous. You might want to view this as the first woodworking video of the of the season. Now, um, I did mention that I've mounted my my uh, compressed air hose reel here on the wall, and I shoved that out through a hole in the wall so I can access that outside. I haven't hooked it up yet. This is the the airline that hooks that all up, so I need to just spin that fitting on there. So this part of the, the shelf is really not going to be usable. Of course, it's blocked by that hose reel. I could have put that on the middle, um, you know, so you could use the space this side of it. Uh, I chose to put it on the outside because this outside is, you know, flat. Uh, the other side has the fittings on it, which are going to stick out that way a little bit. So, I mean, I could have chosen to do that a number of different ways. But regardless, what I've got here is I've got a I've got a single support two by four that goes from the floor. Uh, this one I'm talking goes from the floor all the way clear to the ceiling. And once I get it located where it needs to be on the ceiling, I'll screw a I'll screw a two by four on the flat up there. I'll get this one to show you. So I'll screw this one on the flat up there to make sure I screw it into a truss, which the trusses go this way. Uh, so I'll get that into a truss and then I'll screw the top of the sh that shelving support leg uh, to a piece of two by four. So that'll hold it nice and straight. I haven't done that because I find it easier to uh, size my shelves, build the thing, and then um, it'll be in the place where it's gonna be anyway instead of climbing up there with a square and a, a tape measure and trying to get that two by four in the right place. That's just uh, way, 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 way harder. And I don't think there's any need for that. So we'll go back down to the bottom here. And what I've got is I've made a, a 360 degree uh, frame under, this is half inch plywood for the shelf itself. And then a 360 degree two by two uh, is supporting the shelf and half inch plywood that's pretty pretty strong so it shouldn't really sag uh, you know in the middle and if it does I can address that later but the two by twos are supported on the floor by another two by two which is cut so this this two by four actually a two by four that's cut so this two by four is contiguous from the floor to ceiling and then these two by fours here then are cut to sit under the two by two and then on top of the plywood again uh, up to the next shelf uh, above the next shelf support two by two and then that that offers a continuous point load support for the shelving uh, pieces 
up there. Uh, you can see here, I haven't put the shelf on, so you can kind of see, you can kind of see the frame that I built. And the reason I use a two by four here, uh, and not just, you can just use a two by two if you want to sit under here, but it needs to sit under this one. And it also needs to sit under this one that goes that way. So, uh, you know, this two by two sits here, this two by two sits there. So it really should be a two by four that goes up that way. And then again, half inch plywood on top of that. So I think that pretty much describes it. The back is a little different because I can screw that to the wall. However, I really only have one good uh, screw point here to screw into a stud. So the ends don't really, you know, aren't really supported by anything. Plus I need to support this two by two. So I need to put this two by two sits on this two by four here. And then so does this one. And I've, I've secured this to the wall. Uh, I've got a really long four inch screw from here goes in angle ways in behind here to the stud. Uh, so this is a pretty good support here. And that's why I've just added this short two by four here as a support. Otherwise I would have gone a long one all the way down to there, just like I have on the bottom. See that sits right on the floor. So it's going to be, you know, it ends up being really nice and strong and sturdy and not, nothing that I have to like, <laughs> even not even finished. I can not wiggle that at all. A nice thing is I can reuse a lot of my material. Uh, these shelving pieces are here. That's that came out of the old shelf. And of course, this one's going to be almost twice as big. So I need twice as many. Um, but this is, you know, I, I'm missing a shelf here. So this isn't going to use up piece. I had considered maybe putting a shelf there. I could put a shelf on that side. Um, you know, nothing's written in stone yet, so I still could. But a lot of these two by two parts, um, some of the two by four parts, uh, these are you say, well, how far, how far apart do you put shelves? I don't know. That's a question I always ask myself and it always has a lot to do with well, what are you putting on the shelf? I have learned a couple of things. The bottom shelf should be deep because if it's too low, it's hard to get down in under there, even to see what's in there. So the bottom one should be deep. Uh, they shouldn't all be the same because if you have uh, a item that you want to put on your shelf and it's a quarter of an inch too tall to go on your shelf or maybe an inch too tall to go on your shelf, it won't go on any shelf because they're all the same. <laughs> so, so give yourself a couple of different options. And that's kind of why I was thinking maybe I wouldn't put a shelf there because that gives me a nice tall bottom. It gives me a nice tall uh, section here. Uh, so we'll see, but the, the shelves, uh, above, uh, there's two of them still existing from the old, from the old shelf here, this one and this one. And what those are is there, this is 13 inches. And so if I make, uh, like I say, this, this plywood is going to be half an inch. So if I put this support here on that half inch, and then put the next two by two on top of it, I've got an open space of 13 inches. If I were to just guess, I would make it 16 inches or maybe 18 inches high, just as an arbitrary something that sort of makes sense to me. Um, the reason I went to 13 inches is I have a whole whack of these Rubbermaid uh, 53 liter totes, and I store a lot of things in those, and they're very handy. So they take up most of 13 inches. They will go in 13 inches. So I've got a shelving unit over there. I made this 13 inches and it works really well. Trouble is again, if you have something that's 13 and a half inches it won't go in there. So it looks like I'll have maybe, uh, maybe two of these that are 13 inches. Uh, the third one, um, you can see up in the top here, so the third one, I have a 13 and a 13 here. Uh, the third one has the, the garage door 
track kind of in the way. Uh, so I wouldn't be able to put a tote in there anyway. Uh, so that'll likely be the last shelf. I'm going to get, I'll have that shelf. I'll have this one, I'll, the third one here, and then a fourth one there. And then the top part then will be, you know, just a, a, a tall space for, you know, whatever larger items. Uh, way up there. So this is going really well. Uh, I have, I had to break into a little bit of new material. I found a piece of half inch plywood that's been kicking around the wood shop for a couple of years and I don't want to throw it out because the stuff is worth gold now. And what I found was uh, this is my shelf material that I have and the, the, what I found was just a little wider. Uh, so that's good. And what I'm doing is I'm using that wide material. I put one of those and it, it was eight feet long. I got three pieces out of it. I made 36 inches. This shelf, my existing shelving uh, material is about 34 inches because it was going the other way. And that's about 34 between you know, kind of between the doors there. Uh, so I cut it down to 30, uh, 32 inches. And that way I get three pieces out of an eight foot sheet, which I had an, uh, you know, an eight foot length that was that wide. And I don't even remember how wide that is, but it's wider than half of that. So what happens is, I'm gonna slide that in this way, just cause I am who I am. Is this, just goes in kind of like that and then I square it up with the wall I put a couple screws in there and then I'll square this with the plywood because I'm assuming the plywood is square that might not be a safe assumption but I'm going that way anyway um, and then again the next one goes up here and that'll be that aforementioned 13 inch space uh, so yeah this is going pretty good and again this will be another one of these pieces right here for everything to sit on just to make it nice and sturdy now you can also you can also notch you can also notch two by fours i've done that um you know you just just notch a piece of two by four out and set your support material on that um, I've done that. It just makes a, a little less heavy duty shelf. Uh, in a wood shop here, you know, in a m kind of a mechanic shop too, at times, you never know how much heavy stuff you're going to set on there, especially this giant space here. I'm really not set on this yet. I haven't fully installed this piece. I may break that up and put a kind of a half shelf in between there because that's a really big space but when i'm done this osb will go here on the end just to keep you set things on there and keep it from sliding out the side um, there is another plan here though i've got a i've got a couple of cabinets that a buddy gave me and i think i'm going to integrate those here uh, they're 24 inches deep though so they'll use most of this space so that cabinet will will be here and I'll I'll face the doors that way. I can put shelves in there and store things. That's about all to share for today. Uh, so thanks for watching. Have a great day. It's Wednesday, November 30, 2022. So November 30, boy, December is on our heels, eh? So this little shelving redo project is pretty much done uh, so here's what happened i i could have planned it a little better but it doesn't really matter it's going to be very functional anyway um, i didn't change the height of the bottom shelf so that i left alone uh, these pieces there's a gap here because i just reused those pieces from the previous shelf that won't matter at all as a matter of fact, uh, I'm planning to do another small build 
beside that, so you won't even see it. Uh, so what have I got here? I've got a, a larger shelf on the bottom. That was kind of arbitrary. Uh, the thing I did was I hung that um, hose reel at kind of an arbitrary height. Uh, I didn't want it too low that the uh, airline wasn't going to reach it, and that was really the determining factor. And you know, I didn't want to reach way up here outside, and I didn't want to reach way down there outside, so I just sort of, how about right here? And that's where it ended up being. And so then what I did was I put uh, this spacing and this spacing is uh, 13 inches, and that is 13 inches will fit one of my little Rubbermaid 53 liter totes uh, perfectly. It's not wide enough to fit two side by side, and that's okay. It would be nice to get two side by side, but you know, it is what it is. And then, um, you know, I was going to make this one 13 as well, so I could put another tote there, which I still can, but I, th I thought, you know, if I make this 13, then the next space has, even if I make that the top shelf, uh, I'm going to be reaching over this rail to try and use that shelf, which just won't work. Uh, so I just uh, moved the top shelf right up to where that rail is. Uh, see, this one, the rail for the overhead door. Uh, the top, then I secured everything to the ceiling with that piece. It's uh, screwed right into the trusses. And so that is a one solid piece of furniture right there. And that's good, because you never really know, in a garage, you never really know, you know, Maybe, maybe I sell the place in years to come and somebody comes by and they set an engine block on the thing and it falls down and hurts somebody. You don't know what's going to be set on there. It's not like making a, a pantry shelf or something that's going to have, you know, macaroni and cheese on it or something like that. Uh, so that's kind of why I overbuild, I overbuild this. Uh, just because I'm not the only person. If I build it kind of to a certain spec and say, well, that's all it'll take, then I need to keep that in mind. Uh, I'm looking to maybe other people coming by and saying, hey, look, nice shelf, let's put a bunch of heavy stuff on there. So I've got you on the opposite side that I was showing you yesterday, but this is just kind of what it looks like. The first shelf, and then the second one is is I decided, I was waffling on this yesterday, but I decided to put a short shelf here. Uh, so the hose reel, as you can see, is there. So the other side has has a very, very uh, tall shelf opening. And then, you know, the 13s go all the way through. And here's a little, here's a little compromise. You know, I didn't want to buy a bunch of plywood, make all this one piece. Uh, used what I had and then so I used these little blocks just to attach these two pieces and kind of stiffen them together um, You know, I, I don't think it's gonna hurt anything, but It's just something if if I had all the money in the world and I just went and bought all new plywood for this I wouldn't have done that and you can see there's another one up there on the top one So same with this gap here on the side this with the OSB, I would go and buy a bunch of OSB and finish that off perfectly. Um, lumber being the prices that it, that it is, you can't you can't just use brand new fresh lumber all the time. And you can see that I did actually use some new lumber. I ended up cutting quite a bit of two by four. Um, and this piece though on the wall for the hose reel is reclaimed which was really nice that I have, I have quite a bit of reclaimed lumber uh, to use. So, so that's, uh, that's one job in the wood shop. The thing with a new shelving unit like that, whether it be drawers perhaps, or shelves or cupboards or anything like that in the shop, for me anyway, is I can fill that with crap in 30 seconds flat. You know, I just have to, kind of go at it systematically and say, okay, what do I want to store there? You know, make the categories kind of make sense so I know where to find things. And how do I want to store it? Do I just want to pile crap on a shelf or do I want to put a tote there and put things in a tote and you can store more 
in there, smaller things without them falling everywhere. Uh, trouble with a tote is then you can't see it. You really should label it so that you can see what's on it. Uh, you can't see. Here's some totes that I have, and these shelves I built years ago, and they're 13 inches. So that's the 53 liter tote that I was talking about, and these as well. These are 53s. And so a lot of these totes that I have over there, they have things like my plumbing supplies, my electrical supplies, you know, there's, there's painting supplies and, and drywalling supplies, all labeled so that I know which tote to grab uh, for any particular job. I did crank up and make myself some nice drawers here. There's some plywood in front here. You can't see the other bank, but there's another bank right here just like that. I never did get the fronts or any poles put on them, but they're drawers and they're well used. They've got tools and whatnot in them. And I had actually purchased uh, some beautiful full extension drawer slides here. And these are expensive uh, to make drawers in these two cat cavities here. Uh, as you can see though, that makes, you know, is the height for two of those totes. Um, which is nice. So I think this is my next project and it's not going to be anything too crazy fancy. All I'm going to do here is I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to get some three quarter inch plywood. I want to use three quarter because these totes can get heavy if you fill it up with tools or something. And so I'm going to make uh, two drawers of sorts. They're not going to be full drawers. They might only be two, three inches uh, deep. So it's going to be kind of like a pull-out tray and I will just make that pull-out tray and then set that tote on that pull-out tray uh, so that I can again put tools and supplies and stuff in there. Uh, so I should be able to then get two more totes here. Uh, I had just a, a big tote in here for uh, scrap wood which worked out good. I could just kind of slide that out a little bit. Uh, dump scrap wood on there as I cut things on a table saw. So I think that's what I'm going to start tomorrow. I have a sheet of plywood here that is going to be perfect for that because because I kind of screwed up a couple of years ago. I left some plywood outside and, and the, the exterior grade plywood is not too bad. It discolors a little bit, uh, but it doesn't hurt it too much. Uh, problem is in the stack of plywood I left outside, there was maybe about four sheets. There was a sheet of this um, red oak, <laughs> interior grade red oak plywood. Uh, this is the same plywood that I used if you watched my uh, king size bed build a couple of years ago. And so that sheet that I have in the bin over here uh, is that same plywood, but it's nasty. So it's not something you want uh, to build furniture out of that you're going to see. And that'll be perfect for here, uh, for the drawers or slide outs or whatever you want to call those. I'm not sure what to call it. It's just kind of a tray on a, on a slide extension. I wouldn't bother with the slide extensions if I didn't have them already. I bought those it, it was a couple of years ago. I bought them when I made these. So it's a couple of years now. And I just never finished this project, you know, as is the case kind of thing. So this it's coming along. It's slow. Um, also, one of the one of the things I want to do, my back took a huge beating here last uh, winter, and production work is kind of like that because I, I get standing in one spot a long time, and then my joints freeze up, and I can't even move, and then uh, pain sets in. So my workbench here, as you can see, is covered in crap too. Um, I absolutely love this workbench. This is the first thing I built when I took up woodworking um, about, I think it's about nine years ago. And, and it is just gorgeous. I love that workbench. And what I did was I overbuilt the plans because I'm six foot four, okay? And stooping really hurts my back. And, you know, it's, too heavy and everything like that. But what I did was I, I added height to it. I made this workbench uh, 38 inches high. So it's pretty high, uh, too high for, you know, an average height person. <clears throat> but the table saw here is, uh, is 34 inches high. 
And that really hasn't been so much a problem. Um, workbench height is not really a, a standard it's kind of how high you want it to be and what you're going to be doing. So if I'm going to be doing electronics work, I want my workbench to be up here because I, I want to see it closer. Uh, it's finer work and all that kind of stuff. I don't need to apply uh, a great amount of down pressure on projects generally. And then generally I would get a stool. So I perch on a stool, workbench is there. Even when I'm fixing power tools, uh, same thing. It's it's not heavy duty work. Uh, if you're doing, if you're doing, um, if you're hand planing projects, if you have a hand plane and you're and you're doing hand planing, you want your workbench lower so then you can get some down pressure on it. You know, kind of things like that. If you're if you're doing uh, chisel work, if you're carving, it, you maybe want your workbench higher. So having two different height. Of, of benches. My bench is 38, my table saw is 34. Um, this has always ended up being my assembly table. So uh, it's worked out okay, but I'm I, I just feeling that maybe I want to try something a little taller. So that's a project too that I'm going to take on and I'm going to build a base for the table saw and bring that up four inches. And, and that's easy, but I've got this kind of a frame that runs all the way from here, all the way around the back. Uh, plus then I have to add, because the table saw sits on this cabinet here. So I have to add some spacers there. So there's gonna be a little bit of a project, but you know, it's not rocket surgery. And uh, then I can try out, uh, it'll be an addition to everything. So if it, if I hate it, then I can just kind of take it out. Um, so that is, that is a project too, that I want to do before I get cranked up here in the wood shop to, uh, start the production work. As you can see, I have a long way to go. This is an annual problem. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm not very neat and tidy person, but I find that I don't, have places to put things like there's stuff there's stuff that i i am organized with some of my fasteners and and things and clamps and and i have you know different areas for for different tools that i have set up um, my material sometimes my material is you know i've got i've put up racks for for material that i really don't use much but it's there <clears throat> so I try to stay organized and here's the old radial arm saw and I have a little bit of a project concerning that not really but this space here there's a space below the radial arm saw kind of where this grinder sitting and, and again the grinder is just sitting there like, why is the grinder sitting there on the floor I got nowhere to put it that's why there's actually a, a small arbor press here as well so I have a little cabinet that was recently given to me it's not very big but it weighs about 5,000 pounds. <laughs> it's a really heavy little sucker. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to slide that little cabinet right in here. I've measured. It'll fit in here under the vise. It'll slide right back in under the, the radial arm saw um, table here. And, uh, you know, that'll, that'll just give me a couple of nice drawers for, for tool and, and supplies storage. And this radial arm saw... Uh, fortunately, the the crossbar there is high enough that I can get a good sized tote in under that. So then, what happens there is ends up being the offcut, um, <clears throat> the offcut bin, and I make a lot of small pieces on that, a lot of small waist pieces, uh, like little chunks of wood, and so I can just kind of pull that tote ahead, gather up the pieces of wood, and slide them off into that tote. And that's really handy. It's Thursday, December the 1, 2022. Now I'm about to uh, change the honey in the uh, warming cabinet. I have shown this on a previous video, but it was quite some time ago. Maybe some of the new people haven't seen that. Um, so here's a little note. I say December 1, I say December 2, sometimes it says December the tooth. 
And there's a couple different reasons for that. Uh, when I say December tooth, that's a, that's a call back to a radio personality in Winnipeg years ago named Don Percy. He used to say things like that and it would make you chuckle. And the second reason is because uh, I kind of got in a habit because I'm speaking on a microphone, I'm speaking uh, through an electronic transmission system. Um, I grew up around radios, you know, radio transmissions, you speak into a microphone. And I learned that it's in, important how you speak in radio to be understood. And saying things like uh, the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, um, saying things like that is far less clear and far more likely to uh, be misunderstood than just simply saying the one, <laughs> the one, the two, that things, the, that, that, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, so anyway, it's just kind of a habit and, and it's because, you know, I know I'm speaking through electronic uh, equipment, which is, miles beyond what I used in the 70s. <laughs> so uh, it's just kind of habit. I'm going to try and do this quickly. Uh, the honey is behind door number two here. So I'm going to open that door and uh, I got to open the cabinet, grab the honey out. I've got a couple more skids of honey on here and hopefully all goes well because it, it is a bit of a delicate operation. The cabinet is is 48 inches wide and the pallets I think are 43. 42 or something like that uh, they're a little wider than a standard 40 inch pallet uh, so it, it is a little bit tight and a little bit tight in height as well so if, if things don't go well you got a front row seat because this is real time man we got bees inside so i wanted to sort of stop it not quite all the way open. They're gonna fly out anyway. Okay, I need to grab that and don't drop any of it. That stuff's the lifeblood of the operation. I can lift them both, but I can't lift them both if they're on the far end of the forks. So I need to lift one at a time. I have to get it in the pallet, slide it in until I just detect that I've hit the back of the cabinet, like that. Lift it up, and then I can't lift it, so I have to curl it up like so, and then bring it back. I want to make sure I'm going to clear the bottom pails and not tip them over and also that all the six pails on that pallet are coming with me. Now when I get clear, I can gingerly uh, coordinate a, a level lowering of the pallet. So we'll just set that aside here and see a few bees coming out, which I'm, I'm really quite surprised because I was careful to put the entrances of the hives on the far side so they can't see the door. But I guess the little buggers see it anyway. honey here now, ready for packing. This honey was, it's, it's you know, I'm going to say it's cold and, and granulated, probably granulated. Uh, it was stored in the building, so it'll be, you know, three or four degrees. Now I have to just slide that right in. Of the cabinet 
Set it down. Now I have to pick it up with the, the tips. Because there's a there's about an inch or so of play. I have to check it and make sure that pallet is in the in the cabinet, which it is. It's about minus what is it, minus 13 out here? Pretty cool. A little bit of a breeze. I think they said the wind chill is minus 21. You can't avoid working outside the whole time. Okay, now this one's a little trickier because it's harder to lift up higher. Because once you get up higher, tractor struggles a little bit more. I have to go right near the top. Don't hit the sides. Again, hit the cabinet. Set it down. Back it out. Lift it again. I'm losing a few bees here. I don't like that part. to put the cabinet in the wood shop and it was just a big pain in the butt in there take up too much space okay we're in here we're in there good I'm not gonna turn it on I'm just kind of putting it in here so <laughs> it doesn't exactly fit perfectly there we go down she goes. Okay, so now the, the honey I took out, I need to put in. Uh, I need to put it in frozen storage so that uh, it won't granulate again. I'm working on my table saw riser to get this up four inches. And uh, if you think about four inches, it's uh, three and a half for a two by four. And then a piece of this half inch plywood I was using for my shelves. So it's pretty much all scrap lumber, scrap from the scrap pile and leftovers from the shelf. Uh, so what I've done here is I've just built a, just a 24 inch square platform out of scrap lumber. And I had to use three pieces of plywood on the top, but that's okay. And now, I want to slide that in there. What I'm trying here is I've got my long clamps set up in spreader clamp configuration. So normally the clamp will, the, the other end will be here and you can clamp between the two pieces and then I can move that jaw to the other end and now it'll push apart. They're a little wobbly so I'm not sure if that's going to be a problem. Uh, lifting is no problem because these things will clamp 600 pounds each and there's no way this thing weighs 1200 pounds. So it's kind of stressing the outfeed. The table saw is tipping and kind of putting pressure on the outfeed there but I think that'll be okay. I'll just get it up on something. I made these here to put in uh, kind of in the back when I get it high enough um, to make it kind of tip over this way. I'm not really sure I'll even need them, but they're there if I do. And up it goes. Slowly but surely. I wonder if it's going to slide this way. It might. So this has a, call it an integrated mobile base. pedal system here and a, a wheel system on this side. There goes my stuff. So if I can lift it high enough to get it all the way through there, then that'll be mission accomplished. I'm 
may have to reposition my clamps on it. Pretty good, I got about eight inches to go. Clamp bars are bending a little bit. These are really expensive clamps, so I sure hope I don't ruin them. Sliding. About three inches to go. Probably gonna have some stuff slide off of here. Ooh. That's not what you want. Now the big problem with using a clamp like this is there's no there's no soft way to lower it. It's uh it's just release it and it goes boom and it falls. Uh, so hopefully that's not gonna cause a problem see kind of kind of like that maybe i can reposition these because we're almost there <laughs> You know, I don't clean it off before I do this. If it hits the floor, fine. If it doesn't hit the floor, the, good. I can always add another one. I'll show you how that's done. There's a little spinner there and then that just goes right on that side it goes together like that this one seems to be bending more than the other I guess because of this there's a lot more weight Actually, nothing on that one. <laughs> so close. Actually, I think that's good enough. Okay, well, <laughs> it's up there. Huh. Well, 38 and 3 sixteenths. I would say that's a win. Now you can see that I need to make four inch spacers here under those legs, kind of in the back, two or three places. And then this cabinet needs to have spacers on top. It's not an elegant solution, but I have some spacers situated around the outside here. Of course, you can see that one's not even sitting on the floor. Uh, that needs to go up a little on that side. So that might tip things a little bit this way. I can shim it if not want everything to be nice and solid so you can lean on it and pound on it and stuff like that. Uh, this, this cabinet is on wheels because, uh, because this saw has a mobile base. When I built this cabinet, uh, just to use this space under here, I uh, built it on wheels and I built kind of a rail system here. Sorry, James. I did start putting some finish on. I ran out. 
if I put a rail system on here, there's a there's a rail under under there. You can almost see it for the junk. Uh, so there's a rail here that goes between these two. Uh, however, that's all out of whack now. And because it's on a platform, that, that it's no longer really mobile. So I'm just going to put a piece here. That's five and an eighth I need between here. And I'm going to get brave and just drill right through there. Just put a screw right through it. I'll screw something on here. And then I'll screw that to it. Draw it up tight. Then that'll be one nice solid piece. And it'll be stable. It's Friday, December the 2, 2022. 12, 2, 2022. That's a lot of twos. Um, so this is the plywood I was uh, referring to, uh, that it got kind of nasty outside. This is a, you know, was a nice sheet of uh, three-quarter red oak plywood, and it got kind of, got wet and it's stained and, you know, all kinds of nastiness. So that I'm going to use for my pull-out drawers. I wanted to show you my my plywood storage here, kind of something I'm kind of proud of. It works really well. Um, I built this this long uh, bin. It's eight, you know, I built it out of a sheet of plywood. It's eight feet long, and I put four wheels under it, and they're fixed wheels. And at the back here, I secured it to the building with two very heavy uh, strap hinges. You see a strap hinge is a, is those hinge that the, it, it tapers off and it's very long. It's a very nice heavy hinge. So there's one down there, there's one up here. And when I built it, I uh, drew out radiating lines from the hinge on the bottom to the points of the wheels. So the wheels are angled uh, to uh, follow the curve of that that hinge point. So if you looked at the bottom, you looked at the wheels, you'd think the guy drunk when he put those on, but they are on there. You can think of the axle of the wheel, the axle of each wheel, and there's four wheels. There's two here, there's two back here. Uh, the axle is pointing straight at that hinge. So the one that's the worst off, I think, is the, the one back here on the other side. But I'm not going to show you that because I don't want to empty the tip it upside down. Uh, so it's very heavy as you can imagine, it's full of plywood. And it is sufficiently difficult to move. Um, it's important to have the floor clean, just like the, you know, the pallet jack. So I'm gonna attempt to pull this out. It hasn't been out in quite some time. Okay, so now this gives me access to grab any sheet that I have in here and slide it out endways. Thusly. And this sheet of, I guess that's a sheet of three eighths that never get, got put back in the bin. The sheets get a little unwieldy. It would be nice to have a higher support here um, you know nothing's perfect I just wedge that in here and then lift it in slide that right in okay and there's a partial you can see there's a bunch of partial sheets up front here different material that I've used and uh, this is a partial of three-quarter I don't know if I want to put it in there yeah I'll put it in there because I'll be using this three-quarter before long is why I hesitate slide it in behind this one in there know how many sheets it'll hold it's certainly not full at this point but I think 
your determining factor with this would not be so much how many will physically go in there, but kind of how heavy it gets, because it's sufficiently heavy. You know what I can do? Well, I got it out. And sweep behind it. So the wheels, you can kind of see that wheel going in an arc there. That's the idea. It'll get pulled out very often. That, I've got a plug. I put the plugs in this building. Uh, it turned out to be a bit low. So this plug ended up behind the bin. I just arbitrarily decided put the plugs four feet up and that was a mistake because if you put a four foot sheet of something against the wall it's going to be hitting right up where the plug is especially these because they're a little higher being in the bin so now I need to run a pigtail cord to use use my use my plug this one I can stick in there too So there's the plywood bin, very handy, very handy thing. Now because the shop is a mess still, uh, I need to break down this plywood uh, some way other than using the table saw. So I'm going to try to use my centipede. It's kind of a neat deal, a kind of a high-tech sawhorse. And it's, it's very light, foldable as you see. And uh, it's extremely strong, extremely strong. I'm gonna try to get this sheet of plywood up on there. A younger man, I could just lift that. Like this. But I'm old now, so it's a lot harder to do. See how strong that is? <laughs> Pretty strong. And here's a tool that's brand new. I've owned it for many months, but as you can see, I've never even opened the box. Oh, wrecked the box already. That goofy box. Looks like. Looks like it would have a chainsaw in it, but it's not. Oh, it comes in bags. It comes in a, well, there's a bag. This part's in the bag. This part is not. Six and a half inch blade. So it's a small circular saw. Six and a half, uh, kind of a regular circular saw is seven and a half. There's many sizes, but the most common is seven and a half in a corded saw. Cordless saws, quite a bit smaller. So the whole point of this, well, it's a pretty nice bag. I might actually use that bag. So it's not a tool that I anticipate using often, but when I do my big breakdown um, for, for my production work, that entire skid, there's 42, 40 to 44 sheets of plywood out there. And, uh, that's this is what I'm going to use to break that down in pieces I can handle to bring here in the shop and a lot of people have replaced their table saw with a track saw now this benchmark track saw is not 
the cream of the crop brand, but I think it'll work out okay. Let's see what happens here is, is I put this track on the material. Uh, this edge is, is kind of a sacrificial edge. It's a plastic edge. And the first time I cut, the blade will size that perfectly. <coughs> so that does a couple different things for me. When I do my measurement and mark my line, then when I line that track up with that line, uh, that's going to be exactly where my cut is. Okay. So that does, that's, that's one thing it does for me. Another thing it does for me, and this is more important when I'm doing cross cuts is that this, this, uh, sacrificial edge here, the blade is cutting up past this sacrificial edge. So the edge is holding the, the wood down while the blade shears the, the wood fibers off. So that means I get far less tear out on my, my good piece. And these also have, uh, so I should show you that, that slides in that track. It locks right in. Uh, it's pretty accurate. This one, I think there's an adjustment here to tighten that up. Uh, and the other thing that they do, it, it's not something that's necessarily, you know, really critical in what I'm doing. However, let's see if I can do it backwards here. Is uh, when you start the tool, it's a plunge cut saw. So I start the tool and I can't do it because I haven't cut that edge away, but I'll show you without that. When I start the tool, then I plunge it down and cut like that. So people use these things. I've seen them use them for repairing a hardwood floor. So set the track out where they want to cut. They get that circular saw and they plunge that down into the hardwood floor and go along. And not only that, but the depth of the plunge is, uh, is adjustable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the depth of that plunge to, you know, maybe probably seven eighths, uh, seven eighths of an inch. And that looks like that's the adjustment right there. It looks like it's a little goofy, but we'll try that. So this tool is supposed to have, oh, the other thing with the track is it's got, it's got a nice, um, material here on the bottom these two lines you can't tell in the video but this is kind of a hard plastic it's an aluminum track and these are kind of a soft almost a soft foamy rubber kind of a thing and what that does is it kind of sits there right so it'll take a lot of uh you know messing around before it moves and these tracks okay here we go um there's enough track here for eight feet of cut uh i don't know that i'm going to do eight feet of cut right away and they have they have a key inside here that will connect the two tracks so you can put together as many tracks or as few as you need for that job. <clears throat> but, uh, so this is kind of what's going to happen here. I'll, I'll measure it out. I'll set this. So it, it's kind of set. It's not going to move. Uh, yeah, put it backwards. <coughs> Okay, so I'm not going to move, and then I'm going to get my saw in there. I have to push the lever and then plunge it down and make my cut. And now that I've set that depth stop, uh, we've only got, we've only got about, well, the depth stop says I've got about seven eighths, 
penetration there, which is should be an eighth more than I need to cut through the material. So there you go, track saw. Oh, they do provide they do provide some little clamps. Um, I think how these clamps work is that that part of the clamp also fits in this this track in the bottom. You know, if, if you find you need it, I don't think I'm going to need it for this. Uh, for one, I'm kind of making rough cuts. It slows you down. And particularly for when I'm breaking down the lumber in the yard, I always cut things oversize. Uh, so I get everything oversized so that when I, then I get it into smaller manageable sizes, all goes through the table saw, squared up, the, the edges get cleaned up really nice and, uh, it makes a nice job. It's perfect size. You know, they say, well, you can, you can make perfect sizes with a track saw. You can make as a perfect size uh, with a track saw as you can get that edge lined up every time. First cut, that edge is not gonna be lined up because it hasn't been cut by the saw. So I have to cut that. Maybe I'll just set it along the side here, and run the saw down it to cut that. So that's track saw. Watch for an upcoming video on building these drawers or trays, whatever you want to call them, um, because there's going to be more to it than just the V-log is going to hold. Uh, and that's the, that's the track saw and the centipede. <laughs> and then I'm, I'm going to have to make room on the table saw to size these nicely put them together and make something out of them. So as I ponder that, I will bid you a good day. And, uh, you know, as always, thanks for watching and have fun.